Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Ghebrek. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Decree 50 of the year 2023 restructuring the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Waqf based on a proposal by the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Waqf and following the approval of the Cabinet. According to the decree, the Justice Ministry will restructure as follows. Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Waqf shall be responsible for the Directorate of Communications. The Directorate of Judicial Accounts, the Assistant Under Secretary for State Cases and International Cooperation, who shall be in charge of the Directorate of Legislative Affairs and International Cooperation, Judicial and Legal Studies Institute, the State Cases Authority Directorate level, the Directorate of Human and Financial Resources, and the Directorate of Information Technology. The Undersecretary for Courts, Family Reconciliation and Alimony, followed by the Directorate of Family Reconciliation and Alimony, and the Assistant Undersecretary for Courts, Affairs and Enforcement, who shall oversee. The Directorate of Courts and the Directorate of the Notary and Enforcement. The Undersecretary for Justice and Islamic Affairs, who shall be in charge of the Directorate of Minors Fund, the Directorate of Minors Affairs, the Assistant Undersecretary for Islamic Affairs, who shall be responsible for the Directorate of Religious Affairs, the Directorate of the Affairs of the Holy Quran, and the Directorate of the Zakat Fund. Royal Decree 49 of the year 2019 on restructuring the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Waqf shall be abrogated. His Majesty the King also issued Decree 51 of the year 2023 restructuring the Ministry of Education based on a proposal by the Education Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. According to the decree, the Education Ministry was restructured as follows. Education Minister who will oversee first the Directorate of Communications, second, the Directorate of Evaluation and Performance, third, the Directorate of Risk Assessment and Legal Affairs, fourth, the Director General of Schools Affairs, who shall be responsible for, first, the Assistant Undersecretary for Educational Services, overseeing the Directorate of Student Services, the Directorate of Community Partnership, and the Directorate of Physical Education. The Assistant Undersecretary for Education overseeing the Directorate of Educational Operations, District 1, the Directorate of Educational Operations, District 2, the Directorate of Educational Operations, District 3, and the Directorate of Educational Operations, District 4. Fifth, the Undersecretary for Policy, Strategies and Performance overseeing the Assistant Undersecretary for Education and Learning Policy Development overseeing the Directorate of Policies and Curricular Development, the Directorate of Educational Policies and Development, the Assistant Undersecretary for Strategies and Performance overseeing the Directorate of Strategic Planning, the Directorate of Licensing and Follow-up of Private Schools and the Directorate of Licensing and Follow-up of Early Education. The Assistant Undersecretary for Support Services overseeing the Directorate of Human Resources, the Directorate of Financial Resources, the Directorate of uh, Services, the Directorate of Information Systems, Royal Decree 85 of the year 2020 on the restructuring of the Ministry of Education shall be abrogated. His Majesty the King issued Royal Decree 52 of the year 2023 on restructuring the Ministry of Youth Affairs based on the proposal of the Youth Affairs Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. The Ministry of Youth Affairs shall be restructured as follows. Youth Affairs Minister who will be responsible for, first, the Directorate of Communications and Marketing, second, the Directorate of Policies and Strategic Planning, third, the Di Undersecretary for Youth Affairs, who will be responsible for the Directorate of Human and Financial Resources, the Directorate of Information Systems, the Directorate of Youth Empowerment, and the Directorate of Events and Programs. Decree 17 of the year 2019 on restructuring the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs shall be abrogated. His Majesty also issued Royal Decree 53 of the year 2023, amending a number of provisions of Decree 62 of the year 2021, restructuring the General Sports Authority, the GSA, based on the proposal of the President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports. And after the approval of the Cabinet, Article 1 stipulates that a new Clause 3 shall be added to Article 1 of Decree 62 of the year 2021, regulating the GSA, which reads as follows. Executive Vice President for Facilities and Projects with the rank of Assistant Undersecretary is in charge of 
The facilities management and project management, His Majesty the King also issued Royal Decree 54 of the year 2023, amending some provisions of Decree 31 of the year 2019 on restructuring the Secretariat General of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports based on a proposal by the Prime Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. Under the decree, item 1 of Article 1 of Decree 31 of the year 2019 on restructuring the Secretariat General of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports shall be replaced by the following text. The Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, ranked as Under Secretary, shall be responsible for the Directorate of Strategic Projects. His Majesty the King also issued Royal Decree 55 of the year 2023, appointing officials at the Committee for the Settlement of Stalled Real Estate Development Projects, based on a proposal by the Prime Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. Under the decree, Judge Hussam Mohammed Talat Mohammed was appointed chairman of the Committee for the Settlement of Stalled Real Estate Development Projects, succeeding Judge Salah Ahmed Abbas Al Gattan. The decree also stipulates the appointment of Judge Ahmed Ahmed Mohammed Al Swedi as member of the same committee. His Majesty the King issued a decree 56 of the year 2023 restructuring the Bahrain Tender Board. Based on the proposal of the Prime Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet, the board shall be restructured as follows. Yasser bin Ibrahim Hamidan, Chairman. Noor Hafiz Bouali, Vice Chairman. Ali Ashur Ali Abdullatif, Member. Maryam Adnan Abdullah Lansari, Member. Belsam Ali Abdali Salman, Member. Dr. Jlal Faisal Ali Al Alawi, member. Lama Abbas Saeed Al Mahrous, member. Muhammad Abdul Hakim Abdul Malik, member. Badr Abdul Hamid Rashid Al Bukhishi, member. The term of membership in the council is two years. His Majesty issued a Royal Decree 57 of the year 2023, appointing a Director General to the Institute of Public Administration, BIPA, based on the recommendations of the Board of Directors of BIPA, the nomination of the Cabinet Affairs Ministry, and following the approval of the Cabinet. According to the decree, Sheikh Dr. Rana bint Isa bint Ta'ej Al Khalifa was appointed as Director General of BIPA. His Majesty also issued Royal Decree 58 of the year 2023, appointing Chairman of the Board of Trustees of King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence based on a proposal by the Prime Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. According to Article 1 of the decree, Sheikh Khalifa bin Abdullah bin Khalifa Al Khalifa was appointed Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister and Chairman of the Economic Development Board, the EDB, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 3 of the year 2023, amending some provisions of Edict 1 of the year 2021 on restructuring the EDB. According to the Edict, the Minister of Sustainable Development shall be appointed as a member of the Economic Development Board until the end of the term of the current board. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 44 of the year 2023, restructuring the Board of Directors of the Institute of Public Administration. Administration BIPA. The BIPA Board of Directors shall be chaired by Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and comprise the following members the Minister of Labor, the Minister of Legal Affairs, the Minister of Health, the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, the Minister of Sustainable Development, the Minister of Education, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Cabinet Affairs, President of the Civil Service Bureau, the Director General of the Institute of Public Administration. Ahmed Abdul Hamid al-Sheikh, representing the private sector. The personal representative of His Majesty the King and owner of Bahrain One Racing Team, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, praised maintaining the overall lead in 2023 Nahara Pro Mod Drag Racing Championship with team driver Justin Bond and Chris Thorne taking first and second places respectively. His Highness affirmed that Bahrain One team's local and international achievements are thanks to the support of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and national companies. His Highness said that the team winning top places in the current World Championship affirms its successful efforts to regain the World Championship title. His Highness added that the Bahrain One team won the World Championship title twice in a row in 2019 and 2020 as a result of the team's professional work. His Highness expressed his wishes of success for the team to win the third world title. 
The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sport, chairman of the General Sports Authority and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received a Najma club upon returning from Isfahan, Iran, after winning the Asian Handball Club's championship. Bahraini Olympic Committee hosted an official reception in honor of the team. His Highness Sheikh Khalid received the Asian champions with flowers and conveyed to them greetings from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He congratulated the club on winning the Asian trophy for the second time and qualifying for the World Club Championship Super Globe. Designer Sheikh Khalid hailed the team's honorable performance throughout the championship and expressed pride in their achievement and in the efforts of the club's technical and administrative staff. He stressed the importance of stepping up preparations ahead of the World Club Championship to honor the kingdom and affirmed his support of the club. The Representatives Council Speaker and Head of the Parliamentary Division Executive Committee, Ahmed al Salam, delivered a speech at the high-level panel titled Peace and Inclusion Promoting Regional and Global Peace Through Intrafaith Dialogue in the Parliamentary Conference and Interfaith Dialogue, Working Together for Our Common Future in Marrakesh. Al Salam affirmed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King and with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, has made tremendous efforts in spreading the culture of peace and consolidating the foundations of coexistence by adopting and supporting all international initiatives that encourage dialogues between religions. He affirmed the importance of promoting regional and global peace through interreligious dialogue. The speaker noted Bahrain's hosting of the Bahrain Forum for Dialogue East and West for human coexistence and the royal patronage coinciding with the historic official visit of His Holiness Pope Francis to Bahrain and with the participation of His Eminence, the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar Sharif and Chairman of the Council of Muslim Elders, Dr. Ahmed Al-Tayyib. Under the patronage of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Sheikh Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa attended the 14th conferring ceremony of the Medical University of Bahrain, RCSI in Bahrain, which witnessed the graduation of 155 medical graduates and 120 graduates from the undergraduate and postgraduate nursing programs. RCSI President Professor Laura Viani congratulated the graduates on their achievement and dedication throughout the years and praised the ongoing relationship and strong ties between RCSI and Bahrain. RCSI Bahrain President Professor Samir al also congratulated the graduates and extended his gratitude to the friends and family members who had support 
supported the graduates in their achievements and wish them continued success. The Minister of Health, Dr. Zayla Hassan, also attended the ceremony of the School of Nursing and Midwifery in the School of Postgraduate Studies and Research. A graduation ceremony of the 15th Joint Command and Staff Session was held under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces. His Majesty the King deputized the BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa to attend the celebration. The BDF Commander-in-Chief deputized the Minister of Defense, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Naimi, to attend the graduation ceremony. The Minister of Defense was welcomed on arrival by the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagr Naimi, and Commander of the Royal Command Staff and National Defense. College Rear Admiral Abdullah Saeed Al Mansouri. The minister affirmed that the, the Royal Command Staff and National Defense College will continue to develop military competencies. He paid tribute to His Majesty the King for his support, praising the valuable directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, and Prime Minister, and the support of the BDF Commander in Chief. He thanked the commander of the college and the educational staff for their keenness to carry out their duties with competence. The commander of the college expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness and the BDF Commander-in-Chief. Speeches were also given on behalf of the graduates and participants from brotherly countries. The Minister of Defense presented the Master's Degree in Military Science to the graduates, which include participating officers from the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Oman, Jordan, Egypt and Yemen, in addition to officers from the Interior Ministry and the National Guard. The Minister of Oil, Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak bin Dana, met with the Jordanian Minister of Energy and Mineral Resources in Jordan, Dr. Saleh Kharabsha. The minister affirmed Bahrain's keenness under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the directives of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to consolidate partnerships with Jordan in energy, environment and climate fields to achieve sustainable development goals. He also affirmed Bahrain's keenness to advance bilateral relations embodying the vision of the two leaderships. He highlighted the kingdom's vital projects that focus on developing the oil sector and supporting energy companies. The meeting discussed environmental and climate projects and ways to enhance cooperation between the two countries in various fields. The Jordanian minister hailed the Bahraini-Jordanian relations and its development, affirming the importance of enhancing bilateral cooperation. The Minister of Health, Dr. Zayla Hassan, received the chairman and members of the Bahrain Hajj Medical Committee. The minister stressed a commitment to providing the best services to Bahraini pilgrims in line with the directives of His Majesty the King. During the meeting, she commended the efforts made of Saudi Arabia to provide all facilities and services to pilgrims to perform their hajj. Dr. Hassan was briefed on the ministry's preparations to provide support to the Bahraini Hajj Medical Committee, urging the delegation to care of all pilgrims and commit to preventative requirements. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Waqf and Chairman of the Council of Guardianship on, on the Money of Minors and Their Equivalents, Nawaf al Maud, along with a number of members of the Council, visited the investment project Malbad Garden Views in Al Jasra on the occasion of the completion of the projects in cooperation with the private sector. During the tour, the presentation delivered by SNAD Company, the Chairman and members of the Council, were briefed on the details of the project and the stages of its completion. The project consists of 43 villas surrounded by integrated facilities including a health club, a swimming pool, a multi-use hall, a children's playground, landscapes and green spaces. The project units were built in accordance with the specifications of environmentally friendly energy saving green buildings. The Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, Halal Ansari, signed a memorandum of cooperation with the Permanent Observer of the University of Peace, a U-Peace, to the UN and UNESCO, Professor David Puyana, which aims to bolster cooperation, activating the role of women and increasing their contribution to establishing societal peace within the framework of achieving sustainable development goals. The memorandum included a number of items, such as cooperation in conducting research on peace related to social stability and the sustainable participation of women to achieve the fifth SDG related to gender equality and the 17th goal related to strengthening the means of implementation and revitalizing the global partnership for sustainable development and national priorities related to equal opportunities and gender balance. Al Ansari stated that the provisions of the memorandum draw a clear road map to achieve the goals of the two parties regarding increasing the contribution of women to achieving peace. 
She affirmed that Bahrain, through the SCW, attaches considerable importance to cooperation with the UN in various women's issues, including women and peace. For his part, Dr. Piana expressed aspirations that the memorandum constitute a model in developing innovative cooperation frameworks to enhance the presence of women in peacemaking, praising the vital roles played by Bahrain to support the advancement of women and achieve their security and stability. The President of the Union of Arab Chambers and Chairman of the Bahrain Chamber for Commerce and Industry, Samir Nas, participated in the 111th session of the International Labour Conference in the presence of the Permanent Representative of Bahrain to the UN in Geneva, Dr. Yusuf Abdel Karim Bouchiri. During his speech, Nas reviewed the Arab policies that concern employers and workers, calling for the need for international labour standards on human rights to comply with the Arab and Islamic identity and the regulating laws and legislation governing many member states. He noted that the current definition of uh, the labor is sufficient to include all the categories mentioned in the laws of the Arab countries and are in line with applicable international labor standards of human rights. He highlighted that Arab countries are exerting concrete efforts to enhance the protection of human rights and to commit to the international conventions in a way that does not contradict religious constants and the legislative structure for the promotion and respect of human rights. Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adel Osumi, praised the uh, qualitative and unprecedented initiative launched by His Majesty the King to promote dialogue between religions. In his speech before the Parliamentary Conference on Interfaith Dialogue in the Moroccan city of Marrakesh, Al Osumi appreciated the efforts made by the Bahraini government under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to promote dialogue between religions, stressing that the Arab Parliament attaches great importance to the issue of interfaith dialogue and religions, adding that it considers them the main gateway to achieving rapprochement, understanding, and strengthening relations between between different people.